ghosts, monsters, witches, and the devil. Everything you could possibly want in the haunted Scottish castle known as Gloms. Welcome to Friday Night Ghost Frights from Haunted Road Media. I'm author and ghost story and Mike Ricksecker. Explore with us. Built in the 15th century, Gloms Castle is the home of the Earl and Countess of Stratmore in Kingholm in Scotland and was featured in William Shakespeare's play Macbeth. It's also extremely haunted and loaded with ghost stories. The most famous legend of the castle is that of the monster of Gloms, a grotesquely deformed child who was born into the family. It is said that this child was hidden in the castle his entire life, and after his death, his suite of rooms had been bricked up. There's an alternative urban legend to this story in that with every generation, there is a vampire born into the family and that child is bricked up into these secret rooms. On a quest to find the monster's suite of rooms, guests staying at Glom's castle one time decided to hang towels from the windows to see where the suite of rooms may have been. They did note that there were several windows that were towelless, so they believed they may have found it. It's possible the legend of the monster may have been inspired by the true story of the Ogilvy family. Deep inside Glom's castle is the famous room of skulls with 16 foot thick walls where the Ogilvy family had sought protection from the Lindsays, their enemies, and instead were walled up and died of starvation. Glom's Castle is also a location with the legend of the devil coming to play cards. Earl Beardy, whose real identity is unknown, but may have been Alexander Lyon, the second Lord Glom's, or Alexander Lindsay, the fourth Earl of Crawford, was a card player. And on one particular day he wanted to play, everyone refused him since it was the Sabbath. Beardy became so enraged that he exclaimed that he would play until doomsday or with the devil himself, depending on which way the story is told. Shortly thereafter, a stranger appeared at the castle and agreed to join Lord Beardy in a game of cards. Shouting and cursing could be heard throughout the castle coming from the room in which they played, and Earl began to lose hand after hand. One of the servants peered through the keyhole to see what was going on and was blinded by a bright light. Hearing the screams of the servant, Earl stormed out into the hallway and scolded the servant for spying. But when he returned to the room, the stranger had disappeared. This stranger is revealed as the devil who won the game and took Beardy's soul as his winnings. And, in some versions of the tale, condemned Beardy to playing cards till doomsday. What's interesting about this tale is that it has appeared in various forms over the centuries in association with haunted historical locations all over the world. Some 300 years later, the card-playing devil became one of the legends of the Oakland's mansion in Laurel, Maryland, in which Richard Snowden and two others lost a raucous game of cards to a stranger who left with a hint of brimstone and a forked tail beneath his coat. It makes me wonder about the true origins of this tale and where that little nugget of truth actually comes from. Glom's Castle also has its very own Grey Lady. This female apparition is believed to be the ghost of Janet Douglas, Lady Glom's, who was burned at the stake in 1537 after being convicted of witchcraft. She was accused of poisoning her husband, John Lyon, in 1528 but she was cleared of the crime and married a second husband, Archibald Campbell. In 1537, her brothers conspired against King James V, and Janet was said to have become wrapped up in their conspiracies, accused of plotting to poisoning the king and passing along her brother's communications. King James seized Glom's castle and lived there for a time, even though the accusations were false. Janet and her husband were sent to Edinburgh Castle Dungeon where the family and servants were tortured for the truth. Archibald escaped and was later killed. Janet was convicted and burned at the stake on Castle Hill in Edinburgh, while her young son John was forced to watch. King James died before he could have young John executed, and John was able to return home and reclaim Glom's castle as his own. Janet, however, is now seen around Glom's castle as the ghost of the Grey Lady primarily seen in the chapel. 
There is a seat reserved for her there to this day, which nobody is allowed to sit. There are many other sightings and reports of ghosts and spirits throughout the haunted castle. One of the creepiest sightings is that of the woman with no tongue. She has been seen wandering about the grounds of the castle, pointing to her horribly wounded face. But she doesn't speak, since the laceration she bears is said to have also taken her tongue. At other times, she is seen peering out of a barred window of the castle, but nobody really knows who she may be. Another mysterious entity is that of an armored knight. Nobody knows who he may be, however, Children have woken in the middle of the night to the knight leaning over their bed and terrifying them. Screaming sounds emanate throughout the castle, sometimes attributed to the incident with Earl Beardy, and at other times to an unknown entity. Hammering noises will also pierce the silence of the night at times, but it seems there may be some sort of dark history behind it. At breakfast one morning in recent years, a woman mentioned hearing the hammering sounds at night and was told never to speak of it again. On a poignant note, the famous writer Sir Walter Scott said of his overnight stay at Glom's castle in 1790, As I heard door after door shut after my conductor had retired, I began to consider myself as too far from the living and somewhat too near to the dead. Glom's castle is loaded with ghost stories, both historic and fantastic and it seems we're just scratching the surface here with its many hauntings. And for more ghost stories, please check out our other videos off to the side. I'm Mike Ricksecker. Until next Friday night.